All right, so now we're going to develop a, a lid for this box. And I'll choose this box to use and get rid of like this stuff. I just wanted to show you what solidify was. Now, here's a tip. This 3D cursor, if I right click, it follows you everywhere. It's very useful. It's probably the most useful thing within Blender, especially for these types of uh, operations. It basically it dictates where the next piece of geometry is going to be produced if I went to add. It also is useful for centering pivots and stuff like that. We'll use it quite often. First thing I want to do is make sure it's in the center of this part. So I'll go to object, snap, cursor, to selected. And then I'll just make another box. This will be my lid. Alright, so this lid, uh, if I go over here to the dimensions, I want it to be 50 in X, 50 in Y, and then I want it to be 5 thick. Alright, let's plop that bad boy down. Now, tip. There is a small 5 millimeter, 0.5 millimeter variation between print that I've figured out. I use it all the time. So let's say an object, you want to interact with another object. Well, don't put it on top like that. Put it 0.5 away from object. And if you're not sure what <laughs> and how small that is in your head, watch this. Point five. Oh, yeah, point five. So that's really not all that big, but trust me on this, uh, it works out every time. And this is because on my printer, I ha I'm using a point five head. Um, now. I also have a 0.45 and a 0.35, and it works out that way. If you have a 0.35 instead of 0.5, you should use 0.35, and et cetera and so forth. So whatever your head is on your printer, I found that it perfectly matches that variation between print and width of extrusion and melting and all that good variance that happens with 3D print. Okay. Now, let's say I need now to develop a hinge. Well. Uh, let's put the 3D cursor over here and let's add mesh cylinder. Let's jump into a 3 and a keyboard. Uh, on the number pad, we'll rotate this piece by hitting R, E, and W. E is my rotate. So I'll rotate this 90 degrees. And this I want 10. That makes a really sturdy hinge. So you can go a little thinner for that, but now let's make a really cool sturdy hinge. Okay, I'm gonna place this bad boy right here. And I'm going to say that this object needs to be printed flat. So, hence, this, if I hit tab, I can get into components. And here's how I can choose my components. I'm going to choose vertices. I'm going to take these components right here. And I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and flatten them out by scaling them. Also, I want to take these components and flatten those out. W to move them. Okay, so I have this. All right. Now what I like to do is have um, the ability to kind of move this in and out and adjust it a little bit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is grab these three faces. So I hit tab to get the faces. 
uh, control E is to extrude. I right click to kind of cancel the operation and just move them just a little bit like that. So there we go. Have something that looks like that. Seven on the keyboard gives you the top down view. And let's say I wanted this thicker. Well, again, we want sturdy, so I'll go and change the Z to 10. Now, notice the rotational axis is a little different here. My dimensions, it looks like Y here, but really I changed Z. If that ever happens to you, it's Object, Apply, Rotation, and Scale. And now Y is fixed. Y is actually Y. It's because I rotated the part. All right, so what I'm going to do here is hit Shift D to duplicate this. And this is this is kind of like sketch variation of designing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, the, you know, you could spend some a lot of time making these perfectly spaced 0.5 every time. But for me, I, I kind of want to get you to have a sense of, you know, what 0.5 is and just kind of abide by it or whatever your spacing of your tip is. So in this case, I usually just done this so many times that I can kind of get it in my head. So I'm just marquee selecting these and moving them to about like that. All right, now this hinge, I want it to kind of match the box. So here's how I do that. Just scale all these parts together and move them to right about here. Z on the keyboard. All right, now I can eliminate these two. Now I could rotate them and make them useful within the project, but again, I, I like to show a couple tips here. So this is my new center point. I'll call this my new center point. Object, snap, cursor to selected. And that way, if I add a new cylinder out here, it's, it's in that alignment with this one and I can rotate it pop in some dimensions and this one is going to be like 9.5 and there we go we got a perfect variance right there all right and for a hinge, you should leave just, you know, like a little bit of a fudge factor. There's no doubt about it. So now I need the reverse part. Um, so for this one, I'll take these, hit R, straighten them out. And then I also want to make this box so it prints flat this way. Okay. Well, how the heck am I going to do that? Well, it's very easy. I'm just going to taper this in. So I'll taper it in to right about here. Just like that. And I'll taper it all the way down. Just so when it prints, it prints nicely. Then... And grab this one or move one of these up like this. And put it right there. So 
a very sturdy box, right? Again, that allows me to print it flat all the way up. Okay, 7Z. Shift D to duplicate that. And we'll join that to this box. Okay, so three on the keyboard. Tab. This is what I like to do for these bottom ones. I'll grab all of these, hit R, and scale them. This will scale them negatively and flatten out the piece of geometry at the bottom. Okay, let's try our hinge out. It's always good to have. Let's take these pieces and this piece. I need these to, to clash in some manner, so uh, let's fix that. Again, let's join them all. So object mode, grab them all, object join tab, move this in down, move this in. Again, I like to think about sturdiness, so what I'll do is here is I'll reverse this. So it's right about here. And there. And then I need it to join with this box. So object join, tab, grab all the vertices and R to scale them negatively. So this is my hinge point now because I set that a long time ago. R, Z to see this. Now I'm just gonna rotate this out and you can see, yep, I have a full rotate. And the full rotate would stop right about here. So that's how far I could open this box. If I wanted it to stop right here, I would just angle this out so that's the stopping point. I can move the vertices of these over. I like having it open all the way though. Zero to close it. All right, last but not least, we need something to, um, well, we need to even out a few things too. So seven on the keyboard, Z. I wanna fix this, I'm gonna keep it even. So I grab the vertices here, R to negatively scale them. This one, R to negatively scale them. And if I need to fix the lid, here I type in 50. Now always be mindful of things that might change along the way. Uh, so here I'll grab this form, L allows you to grab a form and I can move that here this one L move that here again if you want to measure those perfectly you know what you could do is build a box it's like 0.5 and put them in between there all right almost there now we just add mesh cylinder R to rotate it. Now this one, um, I need it to be, I can use the filament for PLA as the actual pin and the filament comes in either um, 1.8, which is actually 2.5 without drilling. Whoops, yeah, 2.5 without drilling. 
So anything that you have as far as a physical object in real life, just add 0.5 to it and it works every time without drilling. <laughs> we'll be using that all the time. It's my number one hat trick. Now what's the center of this? Well, shift D to duplicate this. R to scale it out. W to move it. R to scale it. So what I'm going to do is find the, the center of this. And then I go object snap cursor to select it. Then I can go this one and go object snap selected to cursor. So that's the perfect center of that mass. And 2.5 works. Uh, save anything that you have. Anytime you use a boolean make sure you save And then we could take this object, bam, just like that, and uh, we're going to name it 01 HI for hinge. This one, we're going to take and Boolean cut it. So you go to the wrench, go to Boolean, go to difference, and choose 01 high. Z to see the change. So you can now see that there's an actual uh, hole going through that. Uh, the other one we need is this one. I'll go in here and Boolean. Difference. High. Z on the keyboard. Apply it. So now I can hide this and I can hide it by just going in here and just clicking the eye. And now I have a nice hinge that filament can go through. In order to get this to 3D print, I would have to rotate it, just like that, and on the keyboard to stiflate a perfect rotation. So 180 degrees. And if I want to print the two objects at the same time, they have to be at the same zero or bottom planar. Okay, so to do that, um, click on the first one, click a vertice, mesh, snap, cursor to selected, tab, object, transform, origin to 3D cursor, N, and I'm just going to state Z is zero. That will move it perfectly at zero, and I'll do the same with this one. Grab a vertice at the very bottom, mesh, snap, cursor to selected, tab, object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. Again, moving that to zero. Perfect. Okay, notice something that went bad. <laughs> I forgot to apply that. So, get it back to where it was. Uh, so, always apply your boolean. Always. And I think that a boolean was applied when it was shut. Just make sure that it's applied when it's shut. There we go. Now repeat the operation. Mesh, snap, cursor to selected. Tab, object, transform, origin 3D cursor, move it to zero. Rotate, E. I always kind of test the water with rotate. Uh, so I'll kind of move it a little bit and then I'll rotate it based on the perfect operation there. Perfect number. Number. Grab this one. Mesh, snap, cursor to selected, tab, object, transform, origin to 3D cursor. Move it to zero. 
All right, so there we go. We have a box with a hinge. Grab the two, join them together. Now you would just run it through your favorite um, output, like I use NetFab a lot, uh, to repair any damage that Booleans cause. I'll be using that a lot throughout the series. I probably should just make a video called Cleaning Up. That way we just can jump into it. And NetFab. NetFab Basic is what I use. Remove this. Add part. Box with hinge. Hit the red cross. Automatic repair it. Apply repair. Right click. Export part. It's still. Box with hinge. So now it's ready to 3D print. So, I hope you enjoyed the box with hinge example. It's 21 minutes long. Good luck with that. <laughs> Have a good one.